the fair winds blow Our home is where the waters flow We'll show you what we've come to know On board while sailing wisdom So we're anchored in Fort Pierce How are you liking the new lithium batteries? I'm tired of talking about the lithium batteries <laughs> Okay <sighs> So what you're doing now, that's not lithium batteries. So I'm making dinner. Uh, we're having rice and beans. Charlie wants to go outside. Out you go, Charles. <laughs> Charlie's a bird. So there are a lot of differences between traveling in the ocean and traveling in the ICW. The biggest, most important difference is that we get to sleep on anchor every night. And so it's just super awesome to be able to just pull into a place, put down that anchor, and just relax. You don't have to be keeping watch. You don't have to be throwing up. No night watch. And I get to cook and not be rocking all over the place. So we got here, we dropped the hook, everything's great. The sun just kept charging the batteries for the rest of the afternoon. And tomorrow we pull into a marina first thing in the morning, like eight in the morning they want us in there, which is nice because then we'll be docking without all this crazy wind. Bay, we may need to throw away all of our canned items. All of them? Well, I went into the locker and it's just covered in mold. Like everything is covered in mold and it smells atrocious. Is this the canned meats or the canned beans? Uh, it's canned beans. Oh, okay. The good news is they were all really old. Yeah, they're they're from when we left Baltimore. Yeah, five but years um, ago. they were mainly like we were freaked out because we were crossing an ocean, and we were like, let's buy all the beans just in case we're becalmed for forty days and we starve. <laughs> and uh, we now know better than that, but we still have all those beans, and I think it's time to cleanse the locker. Okay, that just smells like really, really, really bad in there. Uh, yeah, yeah, Maddie's right. We're gonna have to chuck that whole locker. Uh, there are some things that we might be able to keep, but honestly, I think that one of the cans probably rusted through, let out some food juices. Stuff started eating the food juices. And it just all went nasty from there. Yeah, that's just really gross. And being how we have like Publix every stop of the way, there's really no point in hoarding all these cans. Especially if it's disgusting. And that'll shave a lot of weight off our boat. We'll gain a whole locker. Yes, what would you like to use that locker for? My art supplies. That's a really good idea. <laughs> yes, Morty agrees. Good morning, it's a beautiful day and we are headed into a marina. Herbie has been called to Maryland because his grandmother unfortunately passed away, but we're just thankful we were in the U.S. when it happened. It was one of our biggest fears that that would happen while we were stuck in Europe during the pandemic. So we're easily able to get up to Maryland. He's going to catch a flight tomorrow morning, and it's going to be a lot easier for me if we're in a marina. I'm going to stay home, watch over all of the pets, and await his return so that we can keep moving north. We made a reservation. We get here and they're like, we don't know where you're going to go. Give me like 10, 15 minutes to figure it out. And there was another dude that was just hanging out here as well. Same deal. He called two days ago to make the reservation. It's like, they know you're coming. They know when you're coming. Maybe know where you're going to go when they're going to get there. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't get it. Like, I was friends with the dock master at the marina we used to live in in, in Baltimore. And he knew where people would go. He's like, he knows where the slips are available and where's not. And he'd put people there and he had like designated slips for transients. It's like, it's not rocket science. So anyway, we're waiting. Yeah. Woo. I feel like that was going in. Woo. Woo. Jerry. Man, that spring line first. Yep. Oh, the yeah. flag. You see him? I see him. Okay, we see you. Alright, you come on down here and we'll put you at the end of this dock right here. Okay, you said the end of that dock. Yeah. I bet I can get mine before he gets his. <laughs> hey, I got mine! <laughs> <laughs> Alright. <laughs>
well, Herbie has just left for the airport. Uh, he's gonna get on a plane to Baltimore and come back in two days. So in the meantime, I think I'm gonna surprise him by cleaning the boat. We pulled in here and immediately got really embarrassed because our boat on the outside looks really, really dirty. And I guess that's what happens when you leave it for a month. So I'm going to use our new soap, our boat soap, and clean the deck. Been some damn heavy years, a flood of endless tears. Been laying on the ground for too long. Search for love everywhere, and sometimes I didn't care. Just wanted someone. Ah, oh, crap. So I was filling the water tanks. I had water going into the bladder tank, the rain collector. And apparently, there's a leak in it because some of the water was also going into the bilge. It's going down. And it down. was for a long time. It's going down really fast. So our motors were underwater. <sighs> Last time our motors went underwater, they didn't work too well afterwards. <sighs> Shoot. So I just hope that the level wasn't high enough to go into the batteries that we just made. <laughs> Using our Epson manual build pump. Yeah, one gallon per stroke. <laughs> Lots of gallons of water. <sighs> All right, let's check the batteries. Yep. Oh, it's stuck. Moment of truth. Yeah, let's see. Please be dry. Please, please. The issue is, both need to come up there. This has to pop free. Huh. All right, well, the top of the thing is dry. Oh my gosh, there's a scary amount of water in there, though. Yeah, yeah, there is. Let's see. Oh, shit. There's a little bit of water. Oh my this gosh. This is underwater. I gotta get a pump in here and suck this out. Pack three is not working right now. The oh. BMS is oh, okay. reading crazy things. Apparently, according to the BMS, cells one through ten are fine. Cells eleven through sixteen are all zero voltage. So I think it's just wet. Well, uh, worst case, this puts us down. How many volts? All right, how many amps would that be? Three times four. That puts us down to 320 amps instead of 480. Is it, should we put a fan down there? Yeah, we're also going to suck out the last bit of water. Yeah. Ideally, we should take all the batteries out, dry them, all that. But I don't know what difference that's actually going to make. Like, if the bottom one's been wet, I don't know if anything's going to really help it. Uh, being held up, BMS is like on the fritz. I don't think it's worth keeping the Bluetooth in it. Just take it out, yes? Okay. Uh, should we just disconnect that battery? I would honestly take the batteries out. Okay, that is the best thing to do. Alright, we'll take the batteries out. We'll finish sucking out all the liquid. Yeah, I'm gonna clear the table. Yep, yep, yep. Alright, we've got this battery here on the table. It is dry. And up here in the V-berth, we have untaped the bottom battery and we're putting a fan to it so that it dries out we believe it's BMS is dead however the battery can still live 
So in the process of getting the batteries out, one of the cells got damaged. Yeah, I accidentally arced one of these positive leads. It went over this, cut through the captain tape, and shorted out onto the cell and like melted a hole into our lithium battery, which is a bad thing. So now we need to replace the cell. And when we were building this, everyone kept asking, what do you do if you get a bad cell? And the answer is, you replace the bad cell. There we are. This one's bad. But the nice thing, being lithium iron phosphate, when I did this horrible arcing short circuit on it, it, uh, it sparked, but it didn't burst into flames and burn our boat down to the ground. So here's the new cell. When we bought all these cells, I ordered 20 extra. Wasn't hoping to use them this soon. <laughs> in she goes. So now we just have to spot weld on all this metal again. Get it all hooked up. Okay, it's late. We're tired. But we've got everything dried out. So we're going to put this battery back in, the other one back in, and the one that was on the bottom that was wet. We stripped all the tape off, we got fans on it. It's drying off, but we're not gonna put it in just yet. We're just gonna get these batteries in, and then tomorrow morning early, we're getting out of here. If the motor works, excellent. If the motor doesn't work, we got friends with dinghies, and we're just gonna all pull up, pull wisdom and get us anchored, and then we'll deal with that. But, oh man, I am really, 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 really hoping that we get away with this, and we just had a, a nice, cleaning to our batteries and motor bank and everything just hoping that that's the case and not that the motor's dead so far the only casualty has been one bms uh, which was hissing creepily when we brought the battery out of the uh, bilge so we're praying that that is the only casualty of this awful experience uh, but Sometimes the motor uh, will take a few days to show if it's had any issues. So it might work tomorrow, and then it might not work in a few days. So we'll just have to wait and see. In the meantime, what we can do is put these batteries back, get them all hooked up again, and get the boat ready to leave tomorrow morning. Wow, your back muscles. <clears throat> Okay. Right, that didn't go very well. We ran aground. We didn't hit the rocks, which was a miracle, but we ran aground in the channel. Still in the channel, so not completely my fault for thinking there was water there, but there was no water there. So, we're waiting for Sito to come. All's good there. I'm going to start troubleshooting the motor and see what's going on there. It really stinks. And we we're so close. We we're going to leave and we had all these anchorages planned and everything was going to be great. And then this crap. So, ah, it's very frustrating. Very frustrating. And all because of a leaky water tank. Like, dang it. All right. So, Working on the motor, contacted the motor manufacturer, and they said that there's this little plate on the back of the motors, and inside is a very important thing that does something. And it's supposed to be very dry in there. And when I took the screws out to get this plate off, water poured out, and you can actually see a line where water was in there. So it's safe to say it's very wet in there. So we're gonna put some fans on it, let it dry, and they said that maybe, fingers crossed, it'll work. So? 
while we're waiting, I'm going to make dinner. I'm going to make a rice, mushroom, onion concoction that I'm making up. And Charlie is uh, ready to navigate. She's at the nav station. Yeah, it's quite... Et voila. Mushrooms that I got at the farmer's market this morning. Onion, ah. rice, and pepper. That's all it takes. Charlie, how do you feel about this food? Yes. Do you want more food in your plate? Do you want our food in your plate? It's not that the battery's having problems. It's that the BMS is just toast. We're just doing what we do best, wandering around. So much mold and so many bugs. Thanks for watching this episode of Sailing Wisdom. Don't forget to like the video, share it with your friends, and hit subscribe so you don't miss the next Rigging Doctor episode. And if you're interested in even more Rigging Doctor awesomeness, consider becoming a patron to see all of our extras. Can't wait to see you next time as you join us out here on the high seas.